Hello and welcome to Fusion Fundamentals with me MJ. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create this little uh, curved bracket. Not sure what its purpose is, but here it is and we're going to make it. Um, I've got this technical drawing that I will upload to a Google Drive file and leave a link in the description so you can access this and practice it by yourself. So follow along and see how you go. So this is actually quite a nice one to do. Um, I've opened this technical drawing on another tab here. You can have it in a second screen or um, in another program and just toggle between them. I've just done this for uh, to make it easier for the recording. Um, it's quite a quite an enjoyable one to do because as you're adding in these circles and then the constraints, you can see how it just kind of comes together. Um, and adheres to the geometry that you've created. So to start off with, I'm going to create this large circle, or well, we've just got an arc over there. I'm going to create a circle for that one, radius 115. So that'll be a diameter of 230. And then these ones within it, and just add some constraints to get them in the right shape. So I'll start off by creating a sketch on the top plane. I like to work on the top plane. Uh, center diameter circle. Let's put it out here. This is going to be 230. So that's millimeters, um, 230 millimeters. And then we'll see we've got this one, 60 millimeters with the internal diameter of 30. This one's 42 with the internal diameter of 20. Let's see if I can remember all that. 60, 30, 42, and 20. Create center diameter circle. This one's 60. Uh, C for center diameter circle. It'll move out there to 20, no, 30. See, I shouldn't try to remember too many things at once. And it's important that that is on the same origin point, these two circles. Then C for center diameter circle. Again, this one 42. And C, I'm going to use the same point, and that is 20. So now we've got a couple of the, the shapes that we're going to be using, but obviously it's not in the right place. I need these to be tangential to that larger one over there. So how do we do that? We're going to use a tangent constraint. So over here, it's a circle with like a line touching it. Click on that. We'll click this outside circle and click that one. And immediately it is going to join the lines. Do the same thing on this side. And we can see they're touching, but we know that these are horizontal and they're 105 millimeters apart. So now we can put in a horizontal constraint. So over here, horizontal, vertical, I'll click that one, select that, and select that center point, and it's gonna make them horizontal. So those are in a line. If I have to take one now and move it, you can see they both move together quite nicely. So I'll push D for dimension. I'm going to select that point and this point. And that was 105. So now it's shifted it up into that place. Um, and now we've got this one with the radius of 60. So that'll have a diameter of 120. Um, and again, create a center diameter circle, just anywhere in this circle, or anywhere really, because our tangent constraints will make sure it's accurate. So 60, 120. So I'll type in there 120. And it's still blue, which means it's not constrained. But once we've added these constraints in, constrain this circle to the outside diameter on that side, and that one. Now we can see it's all gone black, because um, that's it can't move around from there. Now I'm going to exit the tangent tool and push T, or you can click over here, trim. And you'll see once we start deleting things, we have got more or less that shape. 
So you're still fully constrained because that line is constrained against this origin. That's why I started at, it at the origin. Um, now we're going to use an uh, offset tool. I'll offset this. That offset was 8 millimeters. I'll offset this line. Let's change it 8 millimeters. Change it to negative 8. There we go. So that's what we're looking for. Now I'm going to trim these and it's going to go blue again. It's going to tell me that it's not fully constrained. So what I can do is just dimension this line against that line and specify 8 millimeters. Now again you can see it is constrained. I'll do this offset again on this side. Lay it up so that's 8 millimeters. We'll repeat that step. Trim, T for trim. Trim those edges and dimension this against that line, 8 millimeters. So it is constrained. So we, we're getting there. Now we can see it's got these little radiuses on here says it's a radius of 8 millimeters, so that would be a circle diameter of 16. So what we can do, create a center diameter circle and make that 16. So you can move this around in here, but we want it somewhere about there. So we're going to again use this tangent constraint. And against that one, and we can see it's moved into the corner. I'm going to repeat this step for all the sides and it's important that these other components are um, are properly calibrated um, so if, if they're not constrained you'll have lines shifting and moving around as it stands with them all being black, it's they won't be shifting around. You see that one, it's, it's snapped onto this point over there, so I probably wouldn't be able to move it around. So just keep it not uh, attached to any geometry, or else you may have some issues when you want to constrain it. So again, there we've got um, our shapes, but we've got geometry we need to get rid of. Let's have a look here. You can see it's a smooth curve there on each side. So I'll push T. I'll get rid of these bits of the circles. And that looks like we're on the right track there. Now we can get rid of that one. So now we've got that shape and it's fully constrained. And OK. Now we're going to extrude it. I'm going to extrude in two parts. I'm going to extrude these edges first and then that center part. Then we'll go on to doing the, the fillets that are over there. So I can see that that is let's see, 20 millimeters and then 10. So I'm going to do this extrude I'll select these two profiles let's get an isometric view there and I want the direction to be symmetric I'll set this distance to 10 so now it's 10 millimeters in either direction so the reason I chose symmetric is because um, the part where we drew the image is our mirror plane and this middle part is centered so Okay, so there's part of it. Now it's turned our sketch off. I'll just go back into the sketch here, turn it back on, and we're going to extrude this bit now. Extrude. I'll select these two profiles. Again, we will go direction as symmetric. This time we will select five. So five millimeters in either direction gives us 10 millimeters. And the operation I chose there, I don't know if you saw, was join. If I select new body, it will give me different bodies in here. So there we've got a couple of bodies. I want this to be a join operation and there all of these are one body. So that's more or less what we're looking for. But there's a couple of 
fillets in these edges here that just give it that smoother look. So we're going to add that fillet in there. We can see it's a 2 mil radius, so that would be a 4 millimeter diameter. Let's go fillet. We'll select these. Select it. That is not the right one. So if you select the wrong one, you can just cross it out or you could hold in the command key, command or control, and click on it again. It'll deselect it there. We still got one edge. And we should have eight edges by the time we're done here. You can identify the stuff, the structures through the drawings, but I like to make sure I can see anything I'm selecting. It's got a smart select so you can just hover over it and it'll show you underlying geometries. We're going to make that two millimeters. Okay, so now if I look at it, I can see we've got all our fillets in place and we've got the structure of what we need. Something I almost forgot is we've got a little keyway over there. So if I go back into this, I can see there that's our keyway. It's eight millimeters and it's 33 from the bottom. I don't know why they referenced it like that. They could have just referenced it from the center of that circle. Um, but we know this is 30, so from there to that point is 15. So we'll just add three to 15. So we'll get 18. What was that? It's eight millimeters and that edge is 18 millimeters from the center. I'm actually going to go back, double click on this sketch. Now I'm going to create a rectangle, just more or less in the right area. And I'm going to push D for diameter, to, I mean dimension, sorry, not diameter. And we'll dimension that to eight millimeters. And then I'm going to put a point, create a point. I'll just move it along this line. You can see there it's going to snap there. It's snapped to center. So if I had to measure this now, that point to that edge is 4. Now I'm going to put a horizontal constraint on this. Horizontal between that point and that point. And that will line it up. So now it's constrained in the left to right direction. I'll push D again. And to the center of that circle we've got 18 millimeters. So now I've got that fully constrained. What I can do now, is I can push T for trim, and take out those parts now. When I go back in, it's already removed it. So there's our complete component. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you need any help with any of your uh, projects, Please leave a comment or get in touch with me at fusionfundamentals at gmail.com. My email address is in the description. And if you need this technical drawing, I have uploaded it to a Google Drive file and put the link in the description. Until next time, cheers.